chair's statement. This meeting is being recorded by committee chairs. If any other persons present are doing the same, you must notify the chairperson at this time. Madam Clerk, may I have roll call? Yes. President Ricketts? Here. Vice President Gilmore? Here. Councilor Disorder? Here. Councilor Gwynn? Here. Councilor Mayo? Here. Councilor Forgey? Here. Madam President, you have a quorum. Thank you very much. Okay. President's notes. So the first thing, it would be continued discussion on proposed policies, procedures, safely resume physical in person council and subcommittee meetings. So at this time, I want to say, I just want to stay remote for the rest of this month. And we will relook at April. But with everything going on, you know, we want the vaccine clinics to be up and running. Hopefully the schools can get back into going back in. So let's not push it. There's no need for it. So if no one um, disagrees, we'll do all meetings this month remotely. Agreed. Okay. The next one. Resolution concerning racism, inclusion, equity in the city of Greenfield submitted by the Greenfield Democrat Town Committee. I do want to add to that that Councillor Wheeler um, has sent um, an email saying that he will sponsor this. So our choices are that this gets kicked to A&O or it can just go right to full council. So why don't we discuss that as a committee? Well, don't resolutions usually go to CRE? Yeah, right. Um, but we, I've already, at the time, it is on CRE now, but I had already been in touch with the clerk's office that I was removing it from CRE because I wasn't going to even have this on the agenda this month. Um, I reached out to Pete Brown about this and said, you know, there's so much work being done on the Charter Commission. Um, Chief Haig is really working on community policing that I just feel like we're doing all this, but I don't know if now is the time for this. So is your, so Madam Chair, um, Madam President, is your intention that this go out to a &O at this point? I'm I'm asking all of you. Do you, would you oh. like it to go out to A and O, to, or would you like it just to go to full council? People read through it before that night, and we vote on it. Personally, I'd love to see it go out to A and O. I think it, I think it should go to a, a a committee. Okay. Anyone else? I agree. Is there thoughts from any other councilors? Yeah. I agree, it should go to uh, a committee. Okay. Okay. Okay, so this will go to A&O. And because that Councilor Gwynn, you're doing all your proposed, no. Because you may be doing other things, we'll talk about that later. I'm going to ask you if you want to start this this yeah, month or if you want to wait another month. I would like to wait uh, till April. Um, I There's a chance that I won't be uh, at the March meeting, um, so I don't want to start something that is going to be involved. Um, but the, obviously, Councillor uh, Vice President Gilmore is part of A&O, so I mean, it's, it's that, but I think we can start it in April just as easily and get through some of the stuff we're dealing with, but um, we should be fine. Okay. Um, so it will be in April and Madam Clerk, will you be able to invite Councillor Wheeler to that meeting? We will. Thank you. Okay. Moving on. Mayor's appointment to reappointments, Tim Fiss, local cultural council, Jacob Frank, sustainable Greenfield 
Coordination Committee, Mayor's Appointment, Nathan Hussey, Planning Board, Mayor's Appointment, Celeste Lunt, Commission on Disability, Authorization for the Mayor to Execute a Straw Convenience Agreement with 401 Liberty Street, LLC, for property known as 298 Federal Street Condominium. So, Liz, could you speak on that? President Ricketts. President Ricketts, it's Kathy. Yep. You you would like the um, appointments to go to A and O, is that correct? Right, all of those. Yeah. Okay. But I was gonna, I was going to read it when I got underneath A and O. But okay. And then uh, I believe that M J Adams is here to discuss the four hundred one Liberty Street. She is on the call. Um, yes, I am. Yeah. Perfect. Is it my time? It is. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> somebody, somebody on has killed you. So I'm just wondering if that one might could be muted. Okay. All right. Go ahead, MJ. Okay. So we've had a request from 401 Liberty Street, who will be the eventual owners of our site at uh, on uh, Federal Street, the Lunt. Uh, Brownfield redevelopment that we've been working on for a couple of years. Um, this is a simply, quite honestly, a upfront housekeeping issue just to clarify title and to clean up some legal documentation. Uh, in my memo, I outlined to you that in 2001, the site, the whole site was created as a condominium. And when um, the properties were sold to the, well, sold to the city uh, and 401 Liberty kept uh, condominium A, the the underlying condominium was not, the trustees didn't have the authority to carve the ball fields out of the condominium with the existing documents that they have. So the game plan here is to take everybody's property on that site, the ball fields and the three condominiums, condominium A, B, and C, transfer them all to a what's called a, a, a straw organization, a straw. It's a temporary holder of the property to eliminate the existing condo, erase, dissolve the existing condominium that's on all those properties, um, carve the bar, ball fields out and transfer those to the city and then re, uh, retransfer the existing properties uh, to 401 Liberty, they own uh, condominium A and the city owns condominium B and C with the new set of condominium documents under those condominiums, condominium A, B, and C, so that it's clear and that the title gets unclouded. So there's no new contractual obligations. There's no new, um, this is really simply a housekeeping item so that they can move forward. They're looking to do a, a a lease with Ryzen on the smokestack, and and this is part of cleaning up some of the documentation in preparation so that they can do that, but also in preparation for us to be able to transfer a clean title to them when the property transfer happens later this year. Okay, can you tell me if you have a a time frame on this at all, or like would you like it to be voted on this month? If possible, or what are you looking Requesting for? Requesting that it be voted on this month, yes. Okay. So um, I'm okay with it just going right to full council unless someone else on committee chairs thinks that it should go to subcommittee first. No, since this is just housekeeping, it makes sense that it would go to the full council. Any I, agree. Thoughts I agree. I'm I agree. not even sure where this would go. So I agree with um, Vice President okay. Gilmore that I think it go, can go to full council with the detailed explanation of housekeeping. We should be fine to move it forward. Okay, perfect. Yeah, if I was going to put it anywhere, I would have put it at EDC. And since we don't have an EDC meeting, you know, just specific. Um, yeah, let's just go to full council. Thank you. Uh, Could I just ask, please, that it go with a um, 
And Jay, I'd really like to, to see the details on all of this. I'd okay. really like to know what the inception of all of this was and who the players were. And uh, it makes me a little nervous when they start talking about cleaning up deeds. Mm -hmm. So I would like to know the, 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 the minutia, if I could. Um, <laughs> Which I know is asking for a lot, but I would really like to know the mayor, major players in this, what the mayor's previous role was in this. I saw where you have um, the East Hampton Savings Bank or if that is involved in this at this point. So I know it sounds like it's clean up, but I'm a little I think it goes a little deeper. And then before I vote, I'd really like to have uh, a lot of explanation on the background of this whole thing to know whether we are um, rubber stamping something that was wrong to begin with and how do we go about correcting it now. Sure. Uh, uh, would you like me to present that at the council meeting or would you like something in advance of council meeting? Well, um, Councilor Forgey, would you like to have it under ways and means? Um, I'm not certain ways and means um, it, it, we could put it there, but what I think, I mean, I'd like to know what the other chairs feel about it because um, this is a piece of property that has been a pretty controversial development in our city. And um, I would just feel more comfortable having the background. And I don't know if the chairs are interested in having the detail, but certainly, I think most of the council should have a lot of detail on this before they're asked to vote. And I'm not sure it's appropriate to present it to them and say vote on. I don't see this as housekeeping. I see this as a little bit more in-depth. And I would like council members to have an opportunity to review this project and um, before they vote. Well, can I just point out that we will have the, we are trying to clean up the, the title because the plan is, is that at the end of this, that there will be a vote to transfer the land to uh, 401 Liberty uh, once the, all the agreements are, are settled in, but that there'll be another opportunity, that there will be another vote that will need to be taken, I believe, to transfer the property under, under the original lease to option. I'm more than happy to meet with you and to review and, and to brief you on the background as best I know it. You know, I've been here working on the economic development piece for just about two years now. Um, okay. So my 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 question my question would be I mean not I know I'm sorry um, Councilor Desorga, um, but my 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 piece would be uh, why do we have to clean the title in the first place What went wrong in the first place um, that there's no clear title um, mm -hmm. for it So that that's one of my big concerns is we're fixing something But my question is why are we fixing it and the simple explanation for that is that, that there was a condominium document that was created in 2001. And when the properties transferred in 2014, the trustees of the condominium did not have the authority to detach the ball fields from the condominium. Oh, I appreciate that. Um, knowing the names and everybody that's involved in it would be great as well. Sure. I'm happy, Thank to, you, I'm happy to do that. Thank you. Okay, and so was Council Desorga going to speak or no? I just wanted to say that I did not think that it was that clear either, or I didn't quite see it as housekeeping. But I, so I, if there's any kind of something where we're going over something, I'd like to see it also because we did spend. I think $62,000 get, getting that deed done to begin with. So I'm, I, I'd am i like to have some more details on that. Thank you. Certainly. So M MJ, we um, don't have um, regular EDC meeting um, this month. So they do have one, but it's um, a joint uh, meeting, as you know. So mm -hmm. Councilor DeSorga, um, you can add that. No, you can't because it's already a joint. I, I believe. So, I Penny, I see. I see that Penny's having low bandwidth issues. I'm not sure if. Could... 
So Penny, your audio is coming in and out. You're having low bandwidth problems. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Okay, can you hear me? All right, so I'm just wondering, MJ, if we put it, we don't do it this month and can you, can we make it an agenda item on EDC for next month? Uh, I, I would really like us to be able to find a way to get it onto the council meeting in March. That means meeting with um, Councillor DeSorger and 4G privately to review the details that they're looking for. I'm happy to do that. Can I make a suggestion? Um, since it seems like there are at least two people who have some concerns and want some more information. Would it be possible for this to go to someplace like CRE? I don't know if it's appropriate for um, ANO per se, so that it gets heard somewhere, so that there's an opportunity for counselors to attend and submit questions. But that's what I'm, I'm trying to be very careful of while I'm thinking about this, because if you take it to anybody else's committee, there's already five there. So if you're not happen to be Councilor DeSorga or 4G sitting on that particular committee, then we're over, it, it's a quorum. So we have to be careful. So that's, um, it, I think it's, I, I can take it on. I, I can take it on to um, ways and means if that will expedite the process and give our, give people a chance to discuss it. I mean, we do have a, a pretty big agenda, but we we can do it, right? Um, and it would fall under finance, right? So what? Yeah. So I think the thing I would do is okay. We can put that on ways and means, and Councilor Board G and Desorger and anyone else. Quite frankly, I think if MJ could have your questions before that night, that would be best. So she's not looking it up, you know, while she's at the meeting. So anything you could submit prior, whether you go to the city clerk and it goes to all of us, or you just do it to MJ, what, whatever is yeah. best. Yeah, I think I'm. What I'm hearing is is that you're wanting a timeline and the names of people who are involved at what point, and how it transpired. So I'm happy to outline that for in a memo to you, and then come and discuss it if you'd like it ways and means I'm trying to clear the title right mm -hmm. yes so I'm, I'm assuming that there's going to be some documentation um from the court or the deed registry of deeds or whatever um at this point that um that we could also take a look at mm -hmm. that might be helpful okay that'd be great thank you mj appreciate it no happy to do that Okay, does anyone else have anything else to say to MJ right now since she's right here? Like, could, I don't want people getting off the meeting and saying, I wish this or that. Like, let's could talk. that information be sent to the council office so we could send it out to the full council? Got it. Thank you. And perfect. I have something else to say on this, and that has a special okay. tax assessment on it, also, not a TIF and STA. Say again, please. It, that has a uh, STA on it also that was voted on. Is that correct? It does have a, a special tax assessment that was voted on it. Yes, we do have not finalized the agreement. We're waiting for the final employment numbers from the tenants of the site to be able to take a look and make sure that they meet muster. Thank you. Okay. Great. All right, moving on. Thank you so much, MJ. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay. Fiscal year 2022 mayor capital budget. Authorize five to seven year lease to procure ambulance, not to exceed a financial piece of 295,000, appropriate 90,000 from fund 8402 capital station stabilization for DPW gravel pressing cost, appropriate 35,000 from fund 8402, capital stabilization for DPW, Y and HVAC upgrades, appropriate 100,000 for sidewalk replacement program, 
appropriate 100,000 for highway road program, appropriate 145,000 for equipment and related costs of GSET expansion and customer installation, appropriate 492,687 for the reconstruction of Sanderson Street, appropriate 350,000 for the design and construction of City Skate Park. Appropriate 50,000 for Beacon Park recreation upgrades. Appropriate 574,205 for sewer upgrades, repairs, replacement, reconstruction of Sanderson Street. Appropriate 469,525 for water upgrades, repairs, and replacement, reconstruction of Sanderson Street. Appropriate 1,350,000 for police station update reconfiguration. Appropriate 200,000 replacement of water dump truck. Okay, appropriate 25,000 for water rate study, asset management, emergency response, appropriate 91,000 for waste treatment, wastewater treatment, plant electrical upgrades. Okay, so all of that will go to ways and means. Now, um, Ways and means, um, are you asking for anything or anyone? I uh, think, hang on just a second. I just want to review for one minute. Take your time. That's no, okay. Time. Well, obviously it's, it's the mayor's. Um, it's the mayor's capital. So it'd be great if the mayor and or Liz could be there or Danny. Those would, I would love to know, um, you know, I, I'd love to know some of the rationale. Um, and I'm just not talking about me. I'm talking about the committee as well. The rationalization, the, the thoughts that went into making these decisions and everything else. Um, a lot of those things might be um, easily, um, you know, explained uh in, in one regard, but I'd really love to hear from our DPW um, superintendent as well for any of those related costs. Um, and I'd like to know what is gonna happen um, at the police station. When I say I, I'm sorry, it's not I, it should be mm -hmm. we, but I'm, I'm trying to uh, make sure that this information gets out to the public. So I think that looks pretty good as far as attendees. And again, um, I think, um, uh, you know, there are general pieces that we can do, but I'd like the more specific pieces, especially the million five. I'd, I'd really love to have the chief involved in that conversation as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And could we also have John Lunt from GSET? Yes, please. By all means, I didn't mean to overlook him or anything, but that would be good as well. Thank President you. Ricketts? Yes. This is Kathy. Um, yes. First of all, Liz Gilman has indicated in the chat that she would like to speak. And I also wanted to mention that now is the time of year for council that we start scheduling ways and means budget meetings um, for capital budget. And then when the operating budget comes through, so it might be uh, a good conversation to have Councillor Forgey um, with your committee, you know, maybe this month on what days of the week might be a good option for the majority of them mm -hmm. to attend budget meetings. Um, and, you know, Liz is on the call. She can, she can back up. She's been through a couple of rodeos in, in her time. So, and, you know, every, everybody else here too has been through the same yeah. thing, but I just wanted to put that out. Perfect. So, Liz Gilman, please. Okay, thank you. Um, Kathy took a little bit of what I was going to say, um, <laughs> and I appreciate that. Um, but also, yeah. when we were having um, the capital committee meetings, it was brought up that capital committee felt they never had a chance to present their thoughts. And so it was suggested that perhaps at ways and means that capital committee could come. So that 
could might be a good intro to the beginning of the meetings Kathy spoke of. Um, yeah, it's going to be a busy, it's going to be a lot of meetings. That would <laughs> be a lot. Yeah. yeah, that would be great. I mean, I realize okay. the crossover so that, piece and it'd be great to be, sort of bring them all together. Yeah. That would be Councillor Wheeler and uh, Gene Wall. Um, we're on capital committee. I have a question for Kathy, if I may. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Can these meetings be posted? I can't remember how we did them before, but I believe they were posted so that all counselors could come and ask questions because, you know, it's sometimes, you know, when we try to submit questions ahead of time, someone, someone else you will answer a question and it sparks a question for, you know, your colleagues. So it would be nice if we didn't have to worry about quorum being an issue. So if it was posted that way, mm -hmm. I think we really get everything answered. I'll have to look and see how we've done it previously. Um, I know that, you know, if counselors had specific questions, they did send them in um, maybe for the meeting that the capital committee was going to attend. We would post that as, a joint ways and means and capital committee meeting so that we wouldn't have um, the question of the quorum, you know, between the two committees. Um, but I'll have to look and see how that can happen. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, Liz, you still have the floor if you'd like. Do you have anything? No. No, it, it, I think that is good. What we were trying to accomplish last year, if you recall, it was a very long May meeting because it was capital and budget together. So I'm trying to get these yeah. separated um, to have have the capital first. Okay. So that's that's good. So yeah. So Councilor Ford, you will be able to start talking to her group this month and see what kind of time frame and you know just get everybody prepared for many meetings and long meetings so okay so i'm gonna wait and then now it is our regular meeting tuesday march 16th um, hold on one second with, yeah. can I just make a comment about appointments and ordinances as we're right there for yeah. a moment? Um, Please. I am going to be out of uh, the state, um, next week. I was hoping that uh, because I'm in a different time zone by several hours, I'm not sure that I'll be able to hit the meeting exactly uh, on time or be able to connect. Um, maybe uh, Vice President Gilmore, would it be possible for you? It looks like our agenda is going to be just the three sets of appointments. Um, would you be able to stay, uh, stand in maybe and share that in my absence if I'm not able to connect? Yeah, I'd be happy to. That'd be great because it's if our agenda is only those appointments. And I mean, that's a piece of cake. You've done it a million times. So um, that'd be great. I just I want to be covered. I don't want you to be um you know, looking to say, where is he? Or, you know, I'd rather be able to say that I'm covered. So that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, I'm happy to help. Are you, are you going somewhere fun? You're going to make me jealous. I'm going to Utah and I'll be in the mountains for a week in Utah. Uh, so it'll be outdoorsy and hiking and away. So that's where I'll be hiding. Perfect. Okay. All right. So, um, Okay, so also under the appointments will be amendment to chapter 200 zoning section 4.2 rural residential RC subsection C. That one's not going to go to C? No, it, no, it's. That's, I'm sorry. That's that, zoning always went to EDC. The, that's for EDC. Yes. Why, okay. is it, why does it look like it's under EDC? Oh, you know what? I think I'm reading the full meeting one. Okay. One, two, That's an update, please. Oh. 
Oh, it's an, I think, I it's think an I went back to right on. Hmm? Mm -hmm. I think you're a page yeah. ahead, Penny. Ma yep. Madam President, um, if I may I speak? It's yes. Um for economic development, we have um we're going to be having a, a public hearing on the 11th um, that concerns the Bernardston Road, the zoning change related to that area on Bernardston Road, changing with uh, perhaps changing that from. Um, right. So, um, yeah. So, amend zoning map to extend the existing general commercial zoning. District mm -hmm. along Bernardston Road to the northeast section of Greenfield from rural resident RC to GC to the Bernardston town line. It's Correct. just that it's being recorded, so I just wanted to put it in. Say the okay. whole thing. All and right. So, and so with that, um, for others that may or may not know, so there will not be the normal EDC meeting since this is a joint meeting. Okay. M may I? speak yeah um so on our agenda i would like it noted that we will be having a joint public hearing and then we'll, that we will be deliberating that night and taking a vote on that one particular item i know that planning board will be deliberating the same night on that and secondly that's one of the two Secondly, we had a public hearing um, at our last meeting, and um, I brought this to the attention of Clerk Scott, but um, I would like to put it in the agenda that we be voting on both of the amendments that were proposed. Uh, and if you want me to read them, I will. No, that night. Kirk Scott, do you know which ones? I do. Um, it is the zoning amendments that she's talking about are to the zoning section 4.2 rural residential subsection C uses permitted. Um, for marijuana cultivation and what she wanted to do. So EDC and planning board forwarded amendments, which um, are not considered substantive. Um, and so she is suggesting that the EDC committee review the planning board and EDC's amendments to form a cohesive recommendation with the planning board on the amendments. She'd like to a unified recommendation from EDC on the planning board recommendation. Is that a good summary, Jenny? Uh, pretty much, except, okay. <laughs> except for one part. I'd like it to say that we will be looking at both of the amendments that were proposed on that evening and that a vote that we will be able to vote and and we will be able to deliberate and retake a vote on both of those amendments they were two separate amendments please so that it actually says that on the agenda so <clears throat> may i ask a question yes you may we voted on one no that's um so this isn't just a joint public hearing this is a joint meeting correct it's it is a joint public hearing yes and then we'll close the public hearing they are planning board is going to deliberate which i'm assuming because they actually wrote what they wrote on bernardston road and proposed it that their deliberation and vote will be um not lengthy Okay. Yeah. Um, and we, the subject on that 
that particular parcel on Berniston Road has come up before. So I think that we will easily be able to get through that. However, okay. it has just prior to the meeting, two minutes prior to the meeting, come to my attention that um, uh, we should be looking at both of the amendments that came forward for the other, um, for the whole RC area and to look at both of those again and retake the vote after. And I would like to do it all of that evening okay. so that we can get that all, all of those on the agenda for 317. Okay. Got it. May I? You're gonna have to take. Okay. Um, so currently the only thing that's joint is the public hearing. Right. So right. once the public hearing is closed, right. if EDC on. and planning board both want to deliberate and vote to make recommendations during the same meeting, it would have to be posted as a joint meeting. In addition. Yes, in addition to the joint public hearing, excuse me. Right, now it has to be a meeting, right. Okay, so can you post it like that? So sure, we can reach out to Eric, uh, the planning board, and you know, align ourselves so everything is posted properly so that uh, it can, you know, there can be votes and deliberation taken. Kathy, okay. can I just point a clarification? Okay. If the planning board doesn't want their meeting that night, there's nothing stopping Ginny from having her meeting. Correct. We would just need to provide a different link for an individual EDC meeting. Which could follow the public hearing which yes. could follow theirs and which actually it sounds to me like this might be a little bit more labor intensive which was why i wasn't jumping into the other um something else that came forward so i that might be a good idea because so is your preference mm -hmm. to have a joint meeting or to have a separate edc meeting for deliberation discussion and recommendation well, we're having a joint public hearing, and then Correct. after that, we could close that and then have a separate meeting of our own. That might be the that actually might make the most sense. Okay, so we will on the same evening on the eleventh. We might as well on get the it same all evening. Done. There will be a separate link to the EDC mm -hmm. meeting, um, so we will post an EDC meeting for that night. Separate link, separate from the planning board but still the joint meeting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to iron it out. Sorry before. for any, any confusion no, no. on that, but it was something just. Sometimes I have to straighten it out up here first. Right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, clerk. Thank you, Councilor Gwynn. Okay. All right. All right. Councilor DeSorga, anything else? I don't think so. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So community relations. So we're going to pull that resolution off from there. And Councillor Mayo and I have spoken and we are just going to open this up. Um, what we're going to do is they're going to meet that committee is going to meet, and I don't know. I want to speak at that meeting as well, um, Madam Clerk. So I don't know how you can do it so that I will be able to speak because there's five people on that committee. But what will be the discussion topic? So it's going to be how we move forward, how we set the agenda for community relations and education. So what, what it's going to be is we're going to try to invite the public to come and speak out, but we don't, we're not going to be giving out answers. What we want to do is try to help people understand where's the best place to go. So if somebody's big complaint is like the potholes on their street and stuff, 
like just like, hey, we have a DPW, we have human rights, we have disability commission, just a way of having a first conversation about the different committees we have and maybe even openings that we have on different committees. And so we just have to see how this committee wants to go about how do we get this word out about this. We weren't going to like start doing precinct meetings because it's just too small of a group, like maybe just opening it up just to see what will happen. And everyone that's on this committee has been on council about the same amount of time. I think Council Hirschfeld has been on a, a little longer. And so... Um, so would it be appropriate and we can come up with something a little bit better, uh, but you're going to be having a brainstorming session for community outreach? Yes, for this very first meeting. And Councilor Mayo, you jump in any time. And the, why I'm speaking is what I want to get to is like, no, we're not going to have the superintendent start coming to this meeting like she used to come to um, CRE. They are like having many meetings, trying to get up and running and getting the schools open and getting their budget put together. So, and they already speak at full council. We're not going to drag them into yet another side meeting so yeah so just this is just going to be a way about community outreach and you know how we can help them how they can have a little bit more time and a voice and it's not at a regular council meeting you know okay. so i think we can probably come up with a, a generalized statement so the committee has a um you know, has an idea of what, what they could be thinking about and bringing to the meeting um, for March mm -hmm. and and start there. Right. And yeah, and the first time it actually happens will be in April, but this will just be just planting the seed. Like how, how okay. can we do it? What can we do to be really effective? Mm -hmm. So March is a commute is a committee meeting to make a plan. Right. All right. I have a question. Yes, Councillor Gwynn. Penny, are you suggesting that it's something similar to the old selectman style meetings where people come forward and say they have questions in their, you know, on a regular basis? I, you know, I have a concern about, like you said, trees or potholes, or is that what you're looking to do to, to swing that committee in that direction where it's an interactive way for people to bring things forward? Or I'm just trying to figure out your your end thought right yes it, it, exactly that what we, what we don't want which may still happen is if someone just comes and says you know i just don't want that library we just can't afford it still it's like well here's library meetings you can attend these at any time here's the fire station meetings like helping to educate them at the same time that yes we're listening if we hear a lot from one particular group or whatever, then we know that those feelings are out there, but we are not here to solve problems. Like when people bring something like, hey, um, the police want this, we're gonna give them a new vehicle. So resources. Yep. In, in place of that, can you please give the money over to this? Like just the education a little bit about how that works also because we have people who've been on ways and means that are sitting on this committee and stuff. So people kind of understand like, things don't work this way. Does that help or confuse you more or? Um. I think it answered his question. Okay, thank you. I didn't know if he could hear me or not hear me. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, Madam, Madam, sorry. Madam President. Um, Madam President, I yeah. I want to. Um, I wondered if I could before the meeting closed, if I could add um, another agenda item to Ways and Means. Um, this item would be on a revolving basis. But um, I think ways and means should be looking into the, um, the the setting of tax rates and the concept of a split tax rate. So if we kept that on our agenda, just revolving, 
we can approach it every time we meet and it will be there if we need it. Is that appropriate to ask for? Yes. Um, Clerk Scott, is there a way that that can be like, like bolded or something so you know it goes on every... We can have it as a standing discussion item um, yes. until such a time that someone would make a gesture to set it as a motion okay. if that ever came up. All right. Okay. That would be fine. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Um, clerk report, do you have? Um, I do. I just want to let you all know that Tammy is working very hard um, on researching neighboring councils, community, uh, neighboring councils agendas, neighboring cities and towns to hopefully come up with a few ideas to maybe streamline the council's schedule. Um, in essence, to hopefully streamline the length of public comment on some nights to to narrow it down so that there still is public comment but maybe not an hour and a half worth or something like that um she's going to bring her recommendations forward to myself and then it would go to president ricketts and vice president gilmore and then depending on you know what their feelings were if it went to council then that would be fine and if not we would shift gears and head in another direction but she is working very hard to look into that information to hopefully make things more streamlined for the council okay that can i also mm -hmm. please um on the ways and means agenda for march 16th there are some agenda items for appropriations there's also a FY19 audit review. Mm -hmm. I'm making the assumption that that is staying, I believe people have been invited. Is that correct? Okay. I just wanted to- But check with Liz. Um, I, I thought that, yep, check with Liz. She has her hand up. Yes, go ahead, Liz. Thank you. Um, so this was to be on ways and means agenda. Um, I believe for the audit, um, and I think you actually do have to send the invitation. Originally, it was talked about um, for February. Um, so I do think sending it out again for March and and possibly if that could be scheduled toward the beginning of the meeting for, for the audit or company, Powers and Sullivan. Um, mm -hmm. yep, that's fine. Okay. That's good. Thank you. Yep. Oh, yes. All right. Is there anything? Oh, while we're on clerk report, Kathy, um, yes. may I ask you a question now? Absolutely. So I want to just be clear about this because it was my faux pas and I'm owning it. So if there is a committee meeting, and committees are made of five people, and I step in, I usually go to all of them and I don't speak. But then at one meeting, I did speak. And then Councilor DeSorga spoke too. So then we did violate the meetings, the meeting open then. Meeting law. So yeah. open meeting law. So from now on, when I, I go to meetings, even if I go to like, school committee, which I was at last night, or when I go to charter, I always can see who's in the room. And, you know, like sometimes, you know, Dave Singer will say, oh, President Ricketts, you're here. Did you want to add something? I try to look really quickly and I see like Otis and Sheila are there and Chris Borgie are there and Jenny may be there, but she hasn't spoken yet and stuff. I just cannot speak if more than five people have spoken, right? In, in that particular meeting. I just want to be really clear. Yeah. So subcommittees being five mm -hmm. members don't leave a lot of wiggle room for a uh, quorum of the council because a quorum of the council is seven. So that's what that happened. That's what happened at the meeting that you were mentioning. Um, 
two other counselors not on the committee participated in the meeting. Um, it's very easy to do in a virtual world. It happens all the time because if we were at a physical meeting, the physical presence would trigger a flag in our mind that we can't have this many people here. Um, so if people attend and listen to the meeting, but they don't participate, that in itself, the 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 uh, being in presence is not necessarily the violation. It's the participation that is the okay. violation. Okay. Okay, so I, I will have to remember that and like look closely because like I say, I I intentionally attend as many meetings as I can, especially the charter meeting. So it won't be so new to me when it comes, you know, to all of us. So I just have to watch how many other counselors are there. And I do have to say, I want to thank those counselors that I do see at these school committee meetings and charter commission meetings, because I know that we're ahead of the curve already just doing that, but I've got to watch my- Isn't it Rick, it's Counselor Forgey has her hand up. Yes, Counselor Forgey. Thank you. Um, so I was under the impression, and perhaps it's in, incorrect, that the um, that the president and vice president of the council are what they refer to as ex officio members of of committees. So my understanding was that they could participate as an ex officio; they just can't vote. How does that reconcile with a five member? Um, subcommittee, um, do the same rules apply? Is there different for a subcommittee than there is for um, for the ex officio? How do you reconcile those? So my understanding, and I could be incorrect in this also, is that the president and the vice president were ex officio members if there was a need to fill a quorum of the committee um and in that instance they could vote if if they needed to fill the quorum um but perhaps i need to go back in and review it a little bit because um if i'm incorrect i certainly don't want to be and i want to make sure that i'm giving proper information okay okay thank you all right well yes well thank you for that like that's one of my reasons for going to the meetings too, is I don't ever want any of the subcommittees to not have enough people. And there are times when I just, you know, shut off the video and my microphone and they at least know I'm there. So in case anybody has to leave, they still have a quorum, but that's good information, the ex officio piece. So thank you for that. If you do take a look, um, sure. Madam Clerk, but no rush, it's just, I just want to, I just have to learn to be more careful. Does anybody else have any questions or comments or? Um, I do, I would like to know if you feel that the order of the agenda items are appropriate or if you would like to move any of them around. Um, we have the appropriations first. We have uh, an order to establish a committee Commission on Disability Access Ordinance, um, establishing an ordinance for community preservation. Then there are the appointments, then the zoning amendment hmm. uh, for the marijuana cultivation, and then the resolution concerning racism, inclusion, equity in the city of Greenfield. That's actually gonna be removed because a &O is not discussing it until April, correct? Correct. Um, yeah, that is a lot. And let me see. Do you think we could, um, it might just go smoothly. We might be fine. But do you think the parliamentarian could come to this meeting? We will definitely send him an email and ask him to be there. Okay. If you don't feel it's necessary and you're good, you don't have to do that. I'm just. I love Will. He can come anytime. I know. I do too. <laughs> I always think about my classes that he taught. So, <laughs> all right. Is there anything else? Cassie, uh, Pre uh, President Ricketts. Yes. 
I just want to make sure you, so you're going to have both of those on the 317 agenda, both of those separate things we'll be able to vote on. on the separate. zoning amendments, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And along with, uh, you know, the cash to repair the traffic lights and the water retained earnings, the well generator, all on March 17th as well, and all those other things. Yes, they are on there. Perfect. Anyone else? Does anyone have anything for the clerk or Liz? All right, we are all set. I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. No Mayo. Hey, all in favor? Aye. 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 And the time is 627.